State Tournament. Congratulations, nonetheless. Ryder up on Wagner, 9-4 in the Northeast Conference Championship game. We'll get to that game in just a second. They're only about four minutes in. When we continue on Championship Week, after this to the 10-team Northeast Conference and the crowd of 2,000 strong here at Alumni Gym at Murphy. It's been a very hotly contested game from the beginning. They call this place the Bronx Zoo and you can understand why. You know, when you go to a big college, you come out and back your team. You go to schools like this, you're cheering for your friends. The intensity is tremendous. NCAA bid on the line. The, play, the past four times they played, the games have been decided to last play. Ryder comes in with a record of 18 and 10, 12 and 4 in the Northeast Conference. Ryder comes in with a record of 18 and 11, finishing in second spot during the regular season. You know, you may, if you're a basketball fan, I'll tell you, you may not know a lot about these two schools. We've got a terrific game going out here. This, they are very evenly matched, and this game is to be playing hard and very well played. Jump ball, possession arrow goes to Wagner. Let's take a look at the conference standings. There you see Ryder 14 and 4 over the regular season. Wagner 12 and 6. But this is a very balanced conference, the Northeast. Even the bottom half, the teams were very evenly matched. In the brackets for the tournament, Ryder victorious over LIU and FDU. Wagner victorious over Monmouth and Mount St. Mary's. This is their point guard, the Wagner Seahawks, Quincy Lewis. Call for the player control foul. Well, he initiated and he jumped right in there. No, he's an interesting story. He's really a good ball player. Take a look at the lineups. These are the starting lineups, and actually the lineups on the floor. Number four for the Ryder Bronx is the one you want to watch, Derek Suver, senior out of Pittsburgh. Hobson is his opposite number for the Wagner Seahawks, and also 31, Mutavich is a force for Wagner underneath. Hobson's been shooting 61% of his three-pointers in the last 10 games. He's really been out of terror. This is Derek Suver. The leading scorer in Ryder history, and as he goes up, he's fouled. We were mentioning before, number 11, Quincy Lewis from Wagner. It's a really interesting story. He's from Utah, believe it or not, playing in a school in New York City. Parents were on a mission to the church. They liked it, saw the school. He came here, and he's done a great job. People in Utah are getting to see him play for the first time. For two is Derek Schluber, seven points so far, three of six from the field. Make he, it eight. He averages 22 a game. He's the leading scorer in the school's history, in the top 30 in the country. You know, the players six, four, and under in schools this size are as good as the players anywhere. It's just that the big guys get to get the disparity when you get into NCAA play. Tony Rice in for his first action for the Seahawks at point guard. Quincy Lewis had to sit down. Hobson with a tough move for the hoop. He's got four. Both teams are playing man-to-man. -man. You won't see much zone in this game. They're very impressive. Jabbar Jones, seven center, kicks it back out. Loose underneath. Hobson has it. Wagner looking to run. Good hustle play. He didn't roll over, so he didn't get the walk. Rickets with the air ball, Mutavich. And a whistle underneath on Wagner. And it's all started with a fourth shot. These teams are so pumped up, they're trying to do a little bit too much. So well, the Pets are unhappy with that. He's trying to settle his offense down. I guess there's so much emotion in this game. It shows up more on offense than defense. This is the first national television appearance ever for the Wagner College Seahawks. The Ryder Bronx run ESPN a couple of years ago when they were in the East Coast Conference. They played Towson State for the title. Zuber has it stripped by Hobson. Ryder retains possession. Bronx get it in to P.J. Watkins seeing his first action. He'll put it up. And he'll draw the foul. Let's take a look at Alumni Gymnasium, a venerable old arena here in Lawrenceville. 2,000 is the capacity, and a very noisy place. You see the steel girders hanging below the ceiling. They call this the Bronx Zoo, the home of the Ryder Bronx, and it doesn't take many people to make a lot of noise in this gym. The kind of gym you used to love to come into as an opposing coach. Oh, this is murder to play in this place. Like you said, you got this tin roof with the noise bouncing off it. Place is gym, standing room. You can't see out of the baselines on the end of the court. They even have a stage at one end of the court. And stage theater in the building as well.
One out of two for Watkins. Tony Rice. Driving all the way and drawing the whistle. He stepped on the baseline. Stepped on the baseline, yeah. It, it's really kind of strange. I, I watched a videotape of the, these teams the last time they played. And what's happening out there is both offenses are trying to do a little bit too much, with the exception of Subaru, who's having a great game. Wagner particularly has been forcing some. Ryder seems to be much more the patient team early on. Looks in familiar surroundings. McCola to the hoop, and he's fouled with Tomdich. Got him on the arm. Chris McCola, 6'6 six, six sophomore out of Warren, Ohio, goes to the line. And Milan Mutantich does not agree with the call of the referee. It's his first of the game. Ryder by two. And a game like this for these fellows is everything, Ed. It's a ticket to the NCAA tournament. Uh, you know, they're probably going to be a 16 or a 15 seed, but that's not the important thing. Oh, that doesn't make any difference. Just getting in there. I'll tell you what, now. This is a good team. If you don't play good against them, you know, you can have a real headache. Nicole is having a headache. He's 0 for 3 from the field and 0 for 2 from the line tonight for Ryder. Nice spin move by the junior out of Gibbsboro, New Jersey, John Yezzy for Wagner. Super shot is no good, but nice hustle in there by Pete Wasco, and the rebound draws the foul. And I believe it's on Bobby Hobson. Well, that was a nice job, offensive rebound. Well, you got Lewis, their point guard, with three, and Hobson with two for Coach Tim Castro. Well, the foul, the foul on Hobson is really tough. Now, you know, you, you're sitting here 12 to 12 with 12 minutes to go in the, in the first half, and your best two players are in foul trouble. This is a tough situation right here. He's got to have a good game out of Hobson. I don't think he's going to leave him out more than three or four minutes. He's going to watch the score, but right now he's going to stick a number in his head, Cash, who does probably six or seven points. If he gets back six or seven, he's going to have to put him in. Well, the Ryder Bronx have not been capitalizing of late on their shots from the charity strike. Three of seven in the game. Second one drops through, and with 11.51 to go in the first half, we are where we began. We're all tied up. 13 to 12, actually, Ryder with a one-point lead. John, yeah, three years ago, they were 4-26, and 26, and then they, as you can see now, they've made real progress. The interesting guy, he's a bachelor. <laughs> That's always interesting. Yeah, you know, he's a neat fellow. There's Kevin Bannon, his opposite number at Ryder, and he's done a fine job in four years. He's moved this program along, and they got great support. You can say that in spades tonight. This, you couldn't shoehorn another body into this gym. I, I think they paid the fire marshal. I'll tell them to go out and have a nice dinner. We're going to have a little basketball game tonight. Tony Rice running the show now for the Seahawks with Lewis in foul trouble. Lamont Street. That's what you got to cover. you got to cover the three-point shooting. They are just excellent at it. And you know, when you've got a good inside game like they do, you can play inside out. They're so tough at that. Two-point lead for Wagner after the three-pointer. Possession arrow is in favor of Ryder. That's back to Capstraw. He is a bachelor, and it's their first time on TV. He's trying to get me to have him put their phone number up there. He says they're not doing they're not having any luck. <laughs> Capstraw, former player at Wagner under P.J. Carlissimo. Inbounds pass. Taken away by Wagner. Wagner's calmed down a little bit. There's a wide open shot. Wide open three again by Yancey. He's got him calmed down. That was a good timeout for Wagner. Offensively, they were forced to the rush and everything, but now they really look comfortable. You know, emotion helps you on defense, but it really hurts you on offense. Silver with it. Wagner to man to man in. Yeah, they still are. They won't play much, though. Very little. Both teams respect each other's outside shooting ability. Shot clock down to 10. Deion Hayes 
Williams answers the call, and it's a one-point game in favor of Weidner. That was a very good offensive possession for both teams, the last two possessions. So the timeout helped the ball. On the drive and drawing the whistle is Todd Rowland. You see the quick clear out there. Todd goes to the basket one-on-one. -on -one. Well, to say that these are two small colleges going at it for a Division I uh, NCAA berth would be understating it. That's the total enrollment of both schools. Well, I went to a university of size, Hardin-Simmons out in Texas, and I can tell you one thing. It's, it, there's the individual enrollments. It's very personal to these people. I mean, it, they live with these kids. All the student body know each other. That's one of the things that brings this intensity to it. It's so good that they got the automatic bid. That, that, you know, that really helps this league, and it motivates these kids really a big deal to them. I think it's tremendous. As some people say, hey, get the smaller schools out of there. They can't win the title anyway. I think it's tremendous to include them. If we don't include them, then the tournament loses something. They never make it because financially they're forced to play their non-conference games on the road to make money to run their programs with. So they're never going to have a good non-conference record. Now they get into here, they got a chance to win their tournament and go to the NCAA playoff anyway. And either one of these teams will rep represent themselves well, even though I'm sure they're going to get a terrible draw. Todd Rowland made the two foul shots and goes over and gets high fives from his teammates. <laughs> Widener with a steal and a three-point lead. Here come the Seahawks. Oh, nice pass. And a nice block. McCullough made the block and the steal. Here's Silver. What a turnaround. You get a block shot, then a run out by Silver. And the best thing he did, he didn't try to dunk the ball. I thought his feet were a little crushed up, and he just laid it up. Sometimes the emotion getting the best of, of ball players, sometimes they'll go for the thunder dunk when they really don't have control. Silver did the smart thing. Hey, you get no style points, you know. It's not gymnastics or diving. You got to get <laughs> the two points on the board. Hobson coming back in the ball game. Silver at the line, currently with 11 points. This is a nice move. You're just a little under 10 minutes. You got to let the kid play. You can't let him sit out too long. It'll take you too, you know, too much time to get back in the flow. Ryder continuing to have trouble at the foul line. Halfway through the first half championship game, Northeast Conference. Tom Mees and Ed Murphy with you from Lawrenceville, New Jersey. Milan Mutovic is blocked down. Silver one on one. Rebound by Penix. And a foul by Penix over the top of Mutovic. You know, Ryder struggled so much at the free throw, and he shoots 68% on the season, or 69, that is. That's pretty good. Not so bad at all, but they're really struggling now. Again, I think maybe the emotion and nerves. And that's the third personal foul on Tim Penix, the top defensive player in the Northeast Conference. He'll have to sit out, and that's going to hurt the cause of Kevin Bannon. Some serious foul trouble here early. 11 foul, right? Make that 10 fouls called on Wagner, six on the right of Bronx, three of those on Penning. Blocked. The Pavich can't get it to the hoop. Tony Rice was blocked on the drive. Oh, you got to use the glass on those. You got to take them back up and use the glass. Get it above the rim. Don't ever be short on a putback. You missed this wall. Deion Haynes surveys the situation. McCola is pushed off underneath, and they're going to nail the foul on John Yezzi. McCola does a nice job of playing without the ball there, beating his man across the lane. Let a player catch it that low. Got serious problems. McCola gets set to go to the line. He'll shoot one and one. He's 65% shooter. He's really struggling today. Winner tonight. An automatic bid of the NCAA championship. Robert Morris has been a dominant power in this league the last few seasons. But tonight it's the Ryder Bronx and the Seahawks. Two shots. For McCullough. Oh, he looked good on that one. He was relaxing, followed through, good rotation. Looks like he's settled down a little bit. The nervous energy the players have can help you defensively. Like I said, your quickness and attacking on defense. But on offense, you just don't execute. And then a lot of times, you're just trying to make every play, and you can't do that. You've got to let it come to you. Rice tries to get by. His man, Haynes, can't do it. Three-pointer. Off the rim by Rickich. Super slows it down. Earlier 
there tonight. You saw Wright State win the Mid-Continent Conference Tournament, advanced to the NCAA, field of 64. Silver again. McColo in a rebound. Oh, good job. Tough jump shot. Normally those shots from that far out don't come off that soft. McCullough was right under the bucket and made it. Ryder Brox on top of three. Rice regains control. Hobson. Well, you don't want to do that. He just got back in the game and really forced that shot. You need to play a little while before you put one of those up. Ames with a little bit of one-on-one, -on -one, and that doesn't fall. Rice with a rebound. No look pass. Hobson. And he stayed with that. He stayed with it. Really good job. What you got to remember when you feel yourself getting fouled, get that ball above the rim. Get it up on the glass. Watch it again. Here he comes. Now watch him. Stay with it. Throw it on the glass. There it goes. Get it on top and give it a chance. Let's not watch the ball this time. Let's take a look at the call. Was he there? Whoa. I don't know. I don't know. Pete Wasco, the man called for the foul, might echo your sentiments. Yeah. That could have been a charge. It was awful close. Hobson, seventh point. And with 7.36 left to go in the first half, these two teams typically playing a close game. And it's all on the line, tied at 22. following that story throughout the night. You're on our championship week coverage. Our story from Lawrenceville, New Jersey. Tom Meese with Ed Murphy. We thought this would be a tight one, Ed, and typical of Wagner and Ryder, it is. It's oh, tied. It's all out war. I had a chance to spend the day over yesterday over at Wagner and this morning at Ryder. And one of the fun things about these two coaches are great friends. They shared a summer house a couple of years ago on vacation and stuff, but you wouldn't know it by the way their teams are playing. Not for a couple of hours tonight, anyway. They're not going to share anything. <laughs> Silver has shot a wild one, taken down. Wagner has shot to take the lead. Hobson's wide open. You can't give him that shot. Now nah, he knows they're going in. You know, great shooters know the next shot's going in. And the kid's been on an absolute rampage shooting the three. Ten points for Hobson. Seahawks hope he can stay out of serious foul trouble. He's been 43 out of 70 over his last 10 games. That's just remarkable three-point shooting. Deion Haynes takes it back outside. McCullough. McCullough did a nice job blocking it off. Oh, again, the secret is keeping his hands straight up. He was beating across the lane. Hands went straight up, and he got the block. Blocked it soft. Off the front rim is Lamont Street. Here come the Bronx, trailing by three. Silver wants to tie it. Silver the rebound. Blocked by Mutovic. And Wagner ball. I'm going to tell you, Silver didn't make that play. This kid is a serious basketball player. This guy is a hooper. Don't tell me about this not being a big school. There's a lot of guys watching this game that go to, you know, that coach at schools with 30, 40,000 enrollment. They'd love to have that kid. Keith Roberts running the show now. McCullough comes out on Hobson. Jumper in and out. That was halfway down in by Todd Rowland. That's still a good possession. That's nice ball movement. They've settled down. They're playing very well. Ames with it, the freshman out of Trenton, New Jersey. We got an on-ball screen coming. McCullough for the three. With Tottich for the rebound. Milan Mutovic asserting himself now on the boards. Oh, he's playing well. The whole team is playing well. They, they really struggled the first four or five minutes of the game. But since the last time out, they've settled down and, and, and are really doing a good job. Hobson for three again. He's unconscious. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely unconscious. Hobson has 13 of the 28 Wagner points, and the Seahawks on the road here in Ryder lead by six. Hey, he's been on the bench for about three or four minutes with foul trouble. Wagner has scored nine in a row. Ryder won both regular season games by four points. Came right down to the last shot. Silver tries to do it on the baseline. Hobson ends up with it. 
Nice ball. Oh, that's the way you convert. That is the way you convert. You don't get the advantage against a good team very often. Boy, when you time out, got to talk that one over. Kevin Bannon needs some time. The Widener contingent is going crazy. The Seahawks by eight. For all of you. On a roll. Check this out. When you're playing a good team, you don't get the numerical advantage very often. And when you do, you've got to convert. This is really a good job on the break. Take a look at it. This kid is one of a graduating high school class of nine. He was the only boy in the class. Of what? Nine. <laughs> and the only guy. No problem with a prom date. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bobby Hobson in his bio says he admires Kevin Johnson of the Phoenix Suns. He looked a little bit like KJ on that run. Well, he's hitting the three. He's running the floor. And he's caused a lot of problems defensively, too. He's knocked the ball loose. Jabbar Jones playing farther out from the basket than he likes to. Number 32 for Ryder. Let's see if the Bronx regains some of their composure. You always look at what kind of shot they get after a timeout. This is a very well-coached team. And I'm sure that timeout wasn't a very pleasant experience for any of these kids. Four minutes and counting here in the first half. The Northeast Conference Championship on ESPN. Ames was patient, but didn't get it to go. Yeah, I got a four-foot jump shot, though. That's a nice job of coaching. Look how they've settled down. They've screwed it down, and they're going to get a good shot. They look like a very determined offensive team. Looking to find an entry pass underneath, but Wagner doing the job clearing the paint for the time being. Excellent defense. Well, the Bronx and Derek Silver needed that. He is now 5 of 15 on the night. Give Kevin Bannon some credit. One of the ways you judge a coach is how his team reacts. The things are going badly after a timeout. They screwed it down, and they worked hard for a good shot. They got their best player open from 12 feet. That was a heck of a job. Loose ball. Jabbar Jones corrals it for the Bronx. Jones tries to finish it off to make that Al Flowers and a foul underneath. You know, you, you got Wagner College from Staten Island playing Ryder. You've got Staten Island playing the Bronx tonight. Tomorrow, Championship Week continues on ESPN. The Patriot League title, Holy Cross at Bucknell from Lewisburg, Pennsylvania at 7.30 Eastern. Then the title of the North Atlantic Conference from Philadelphia. The Drexel Dragons hosting the Delaware Blue Hens at 9.30 Eastern time in a rematch of last year's North Atlantic Championship game. You know, both of these schools are absolutely beautiful. I was over in Wagner yesterday down on a hill on Staten Island where you can see New York City right across the river. We spent the day here at, at Ryder. It's a beautiful campus. And kids that go to small colleges like this, smaller universities, really gain a lot, I think. I, I, it made me homesick for Harden Simmons. Like I said, it was a school about this size. This is Al Flowers, a sophomore out of Newport News, Virginia at the line. Where I led Lou Henson to a 10-win season. You led Lou Henson. Yes, he's never forgiven me. I was the center on his first college team. He took him to 10 and 16. Lou, if you're listening tonight, Ed said that. I didn't prompt him. <laughs> he's never let me forget it. Seahawks 5-4. Defense! 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 Rice works against Mark Wilcox. Ricketts. Flowers of the rebound. Ryder trying to stage a run of their own. It was 30 to 22. It's now 30 to 26. Well, they've hung tough that they had a good time out. They played very well since then on both ends. McCullough with a nice fake. Really? Yes, he gets back, though. The tape I watched in their first game was full of runs. It was full of runs. There were 10 and 15 point runs back and forth. On well, the last game, that is, I mean, they played it was here. And both teams were running off 10 and 12 points in a row. Very emotional. This is Hobson. Well, look how Suber comes right out in his face. Trying to shut Hobson down. Well, he forced that one a little bit. That's what happens when you get on a roll. You just do anything to keep it going. Entry pass to Jabbar Jones. Silver for three. Those shots aren't falling for Derek Silver tonight. Pops it again, and getting is Nicola. Nicola on the block, and they're going to call him for a foul. I don't know. Boy, that looked like a good play. That looked like a good play. I'll tell you what. Kevin Bannon can't believe it. Neither can the partisan crowd here in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. You be the judge. Don't watch the ball. Watch down low. See if there's any... 
Well, it might have been a little contact there, but it was awful close. That looked like a pretty good play from here. Well, one man who agrees wholeheartedly with the call is Bobby Hobson. He's on the line for two. There's under two minutes to play in the half. I'm telling you, one of the most important things does Hobson get out of this half without getting his third foul. His coach really trusts him to leave him in right now. I'm not so sure. I know there's a substitute at the best. This is a good move. you got to get him out here. You can't let him pick up his third. He's too important a player. Hobson going for his 17th point. We'll get it, and he'll take his seat on the bench. Keith Roberts will replace him. Wenger was lucky to make that free throw. They missed that free throw. Hobson's got to stay in for a defensive series, and I'll guarantee you Ryder would have come right at his numbers. Six point Wagner Seahawk lead here on the home court of the Ryder Bronx. Jabbar Jones traveled, and again, the big man for Wagner underneath. Impressive on the defense, Mutavich. Well, they know how to use their size. You know, they're, they're not great jumpers, but they keep those hands up. It's tough to get the ball over them in close. to the big man. Okay, you had a pin and roll. They took the ball, made the defensive center get around in front, threw the ball back to the high post, and threw it inside on a reversal. That was beautiful execution. Very foolish foul. Well, oh, i tell you what. You wonder why coaches go around talking to themselves, don't have any hair. <laughs> Things like that. You know, you got a nice run going. You, you got a nice little eight-point lead. Everything's going good. And you get a chop foul with a minute 19 to go 30 feet for the bucket. And look at Tim McCapstraw. He's giving an earful to Milan Rickich, who committed that foul. He is getting the A speech over there. That is it. Todd Roland replaces Rickich. Rickich, one of four youngsters from Belgrade, Yugoslavia on this Wagner team. They've really played well. Especially considering the pressure they're under. You know, they've, they've done well in school and their second language, and of course, things in their homeland. They say that their parents aren't in any immediate danger, but, you know, things are very tough over there. So these kids have really done a good job under a lot of pressure. Flowers has contributed to the Ryder cause. Four for four from the foul line tonight. And Rocks with inhaling distance at six with a minute 12 to go in the first half. The top pitch surrounded. Mutazic puts it up hoping for the foul. Ryder with a rebound. A little baby hook is needs some work. Here's Derek Silver. That was a great quick shot. Now they'll get another possession. And I really believe Silver knew that. He glanced up at the clock and fired it up quick. And now there's a little difference between the game clock and the shot clock. That gets clock. the crowd back in it, Ed. Silver's got 16 on the night. He and Hobson putting on a show. Boy, I'll tell you, they're two fine ball players. Under 30 seconds left now in the first half. It is a three-point Wagner lead. Seahawks holding for one. Well, when the offense doesn't attack you, you attack the offense. The Riders coming out and going after them. There's a one-second differential on the two clocks. Wagner will have to take a shot. Roland misses. They shot it too early. Five seconds, somebody's got to take a shot soon. Wagner will have the chance at it. Three okay. seconds left. Three seconds up there. They shot that ball with about 12 seconds, and they don't want to shoot it there. That was about four or five seconds too early. You want to get it up with eight seconds. Reebok Halftime Report features a tournament update. Dick Vitale's viewpoints, and Coach Herrick at it. UCLA gets a new contract. That's good news. He's a great guy. He's doing a good job. Jimmy Herrick had those great teams at Pepperdine. Has done a great job, you're right, at a UCLA. Well, a good pass. That's a pretty good shot for three seconds to go. Rice had a good shot, but it clanked off the iron. And the crowd on their feet. Both sides applauding the efforts of the Wagner Seahawks and the Ryder Bronx. Who's going to win the NEC title? Who's going to go to the big dance? That'll be decided in the second half. Let's go to Chris Feller. Tom, thank you. Riders sweeping Wagner during the regular season, but right now the Seahawks with a three-point lead. We'll come back and get the Reebok halftime report started in just a second. Dick Vitale will join me. We'll have a tournament update, look at the first half, and also get you up to date on some coaching news. As Tom mentioned, all when we continue right now, halftime of the Northeast Conference Championship game. The Seahawks up by three on the Bronx. ESPN's Championship Week is... Welcome back to Alumni Gym. Tom Measle along with Ed Murphy. 
And these two teams went down to the last yeah. possession twice already this season. Looks like it could do so again. Oh, that's where it's headed. You know, they're not shooting the ball great, but it's just the intensity. It's just a terrific game. And we're seeing two of the better players around in this ball game. Let's take a look at the halftime stats in the arm revealing. Pay close attention to the shooting percentage. Wagner's not lighting it up at 40%, but Ryder an anemic 28%. Yeah, but when you're at home and you're shooting 28%, you're only back three, you got to feel pretty good because that's not going to last forever. And let's take a look at the comparisons of the, the two uh, top guns so far tonight. Wagner's Hobson and Ryder's Suber. When you get on this mid-major level, I think the breaking point is around 6-7. The players below 6'7 are as good as the players in the Big Ten and the SEC. Now, above 6'7 six, six, and above, those big schools seem to, you know, they get the pick of the crop, and their bigger players are more agile and have better talent. But we're seeing in Hobson at 5'10 and Suber at 6'4 in that intermediate size, we're seeing two of the better players around. One question, can Bobby Hobson stay out of foul trouble here in the second half? He, one of the key things is he got out of the, got out of the half without picking up his third. He can play a couple minutes without getting his third. He's got no problem. Quincy Lewis, number 11, with the ball now, had to leave and did not play most of the first half because he has three personal fouls. So it's Hobson and Lewis in the backcourt for Wagner. Again, straight up man-to-man, -man, a lot of pressure from Ryder. Lamont Street working against Suber. Hobson and McCola look at each other. Eye to eye. Shot clock is down to 10. That's just good defense. Hobson has to take it. Oh, I don't believe this guy. I'm telling you, this is a piece of work right here. An even 20 points for Bobby Hobson on that three ball on the side pocket. Hey, we haven't played a minute in the second half yet. Hobson now has 16 of the last 18 Wagner College points. Silver down the lane. Oh, he answers. I mean, this is, these two kids are really, really putting on a show. And it seems like they're pushing each other a little bit. One of them, even though they're not guarding each other, one makes a great play, the other one comes back and makes a better one. Butondich backs in on Jabbar Jones. Milan Butondich with his second hoop. One of the things Steph was covering in practice yesterday is that he was shooting the ball out too far, and he wanted them to do exactly what he did, stick it on the floor and get in there and force the issue. Silver's errant shot out of bounds. It belongs to Wagner, and the Seahawks on the road with a six-point lead, and Silver's shooting troubles continue. Not shooting as well as he normally does. No, he's not shooting a good percentage. He's shooting better than the rest of his teammates. Usually, if one team is hot, the opposing coach says they can't keep shooting that good. Ryder has to hope they, they can't keep shooting this, this poorly. Lamont Street. With Tom Ditch blow the easy layup. Oh, he had plenty of time to come back down. Again. He's kind of frustrated right now. He didn't have to tip that ball. He could have come down and taken his time, finished the play. There was no one else around. Just under 18 minutes to go, second half. Northeast Conference Championship game. Wagner College and Ryder College. From Lawrenceville, New Jersey, Mutondich, another block. Well, that's a tough spot in there. Hard to get the ball over those guys. Possession arrow will be to Ryder. Mutondich and Penix fighting for possession. Hell ball will be Ryder ball. There you see Derek Silver. You made the point. 35% isn't great, but it's better than the rest of the team. Well, that's right. They count on him. He's got to keep playing. But a kid who's as good a ball player as he is, he's got confidence, and he believes the next shot's going in. He's got to keep attacking. The real critical thing is if he starts passing up shots, you got to get him out of there. Talk to him about it. McCullough's entry pass is picked off. Two on one for Wagner, and Haynes comes away with it. Yes, he threw it away. He isn't worried about it. Uh, Derek Silver just, he'll just keep gunning and gunning all night till they start to go in. Well, that's his job is to score points. A good shooter, no matter how many they miss. Like I said, they're sure the next one's going down. The all-time leading scorer here in Ryder College basketball history. Matavich offensive foul. He needs to sit down and talk a little bit. That was just his second foul, but he really forces this. Okay, <laughs> These are the entries into the motion offense for Wagner College. 
sign language in its purest form. Well, people used to use cards and color codes and stuff like that. He's just called his basic entry. He has another card that says box entry. All that is is just changing the different entries, and then they go into their basic motion offense. Now the Bronx with a chance to pull within one or tie. Jabari Jones gets him within one. That was a great shot. Set it up with a fake, throws the big man. That's Jones' first basket of the night. Picked a great time for Ryder. Yes, he works against McCullough on the drive. Big hoop by John Yezzy. Really good puff fake. Showed the ball, closed the defense. Used the back shot. If he'd have taken it another dribble, he might have had problems getting it over people. That was a tremendous hoop. It helped stems the tide a little bit. Really oh, did. And an equally fine drive by McCullough as he got around the Savage. That's the easiest shot he's had. He missed it. Penix with the rebound. The Bronx are running. Haynes. All hoops are equal, but that one's more equal than others because it puts it back in the lead It really gets this crowd back in the game. 33 minutes of playing time since Ryder had the lead. Wild shot taken there by Quincy Lewis. And here comes Ryder again. Well, they just didn't need that. That was a terrible play. He got completely out of control. McCullough, but it comes way out to McCullough. And the Bronx with a one-point lead. And Kevin Bannon says, settle down, guys. <laughs> Silver off the screen, no good. Panics with a rebound. Wagner playing excellent defense. Excellent defense. They got good pressure on Silver's jump shot that time. Here's the on-ball screen again. Two on-ball screens and a foul. That's a bad foul. Well, Silver that time got right around Mustavich, who came out to play and came out almost the top of the key. I, what he was doing there, I don't know. No, Silver was falling forward. He's a little bit out of control. You force somebody to take a pressure shot like that, you don't need to foul him. And for the Wagner big man, Mutadzic, his third personal foul. That hurts, but he's not having a great game. He really isn't having a good offensive game, so it doesn't hurt to take him out a little bit right now. Well, Silver fouled in the act. He'll get two. That is the second team foul on Wagner. Ryder has no team fouls in the second half. <laughs> 22 points now for Derek Silver and Ed. We have 15 minutes just about left to play, and Super's reached the season end. Well, he's having a great game. You know, great games belong to great players. And this is the kind of game where, the, you know, where Super comes forward, Hobson comes forward. You all expect that out of your great players, you know, when all the chips are down. As Penix gets the rest, Wilcox comes in for him. Super at the line. He's not having a great shooting night. He's showing tonight he's a scorer and not just a shooter. There's a difference. Yeah, he's a player. Well, he is. He's a player on the defensive end. He rebounds the ball. The Ryder Bronx up by two. The coaches want to talk about it. And alumni Jim is alive with excitement. The first two meetings of these teams during the regular season, both four-point games were settled on the last possession and both possessed runs. You know, we got an 11-2 run by Ryder now. We had a real run by Wagner in the first half. We'll probably have some more. I don't think either team's going to get any day like this, baby, is going to the wire. And a night these kids will long remember. Playing for a chance to go to the big dance. Flowers tries to deflect it, knocks it out of bounds. Al Flowers with a good effort for Ryder. Watch how the teams react after the timeout. That always tells you about the coach's control, about the kids that they're listening. And... Hobson will run the show for Tim Capstraw's Wagner Seahawks. Wagner needs a good shot right here. They've gotten in a little bit of trouble the last couple of minutes. Street double team. Roland almost has it taken away. Boy, that's serious pressure defense. Shot clock's down to 10 right now. Ryder is sticking a man-to-man. -man. Look at this! Unbelievable! Oh, my! Oh, my. 
Unbelievable. I'm telling you, that was a four-pointer. That was an NBA shot. <laughs> you know, he stroked it, too. He didn't throw it. He stroked it. This kid has really got strong wrists. Silencing the crowd right now in Lawrenceville. He is four for four from three-point land is Bobby Hobson. 23 on the night. Wilcox. Nice inside-out pass by Jabbar Jones. I'm a little surprised that Wagner doubled down then on defense and gave up the three-pointer. I would think they'd leave it to their big kids to handle it themselves down in there. Sophomore from nearby Milltown, New Jersey, Mark Wilcox with a big three for Ryder. Thompson looking for a screen, doesn't get it. Entry pass to Batondich has it taken away. Ryder doubled down hard on it. They're face card to Hobson. Street takes it to the hole, no hard, no foul. Rice gets his own missed shot. And a new 45. Didn't need much of it, though, did Lamont Street, did he? No, oh, they stroked those threes. The three-point shots are, they, they hold every record. In the school, it's three-point shooting. It is a major part of their game. Lamont Street has nine points tonight. Guess how he got all of them? Three threes. Good. Off the rim is Silver. Here's Jabari Jones. That was a big play because Silver was wide open. He had a great shot. Just banged it into the front of the rim. Al Flowers, number 52 for Ryder. Did a nice shot keeping the rebound alive. Almost a steal. Hobson controls. This game is no place for the faint of heart. You can get hit out there. Two-point rider lead at 49-47. Hobson misses his first three ball of the night. He's human. He's human. <laughs> I was really had my doubts. Point lead, Northeast Conference Championship with Ed Murphy. I'm Tom Meese. Glad you'll be with us on Championship Week. The winner goes to the NCAA tournament. No double down now by Wagner. See him? They're staying outside, letting their big man try to handle it, and he did. And it pays off. Well, he mixed it up. See, he doubled down, got burned by the three-pointer. That's a good coaching job. He signaled it, and they stayed out. I'll tell you what, Rice better get it over the half-court line. He just made it. Mutandic, and a nice job by Jabbar Jones, clean block. Off the hands of Silver. Thompson deflected that ball, I mean, he's just all over the place, even defensively. Deflected it into Silver, and Silver fumbled out of bounds. Well, 10 minutes, 52 seconds left in the second half. Ryder leads it by two. The ball, watch his hands on the follow through. This kid is at about 23 feet. Now, just watch his hands. Byron right through there. That stroke is like it was a 15-foot jump shot, and he absolutely nails it. Great conditioning for this time in the ball game. His legs, but I, I'm really impressed with his hand and wrist action. To shoot a ball that far and shoot it with that kind of form, that's remarkable. Hobson, the junior out of Bridgehampton, New York, 5'10", 170 pounds. He is strong, very strong. He's got the build of a middleweight fighter and great hand and wrist strength. This is Quincy Lewis. He hops in the street. Butondich, nice power move down the lane. That's got to help Wagner to get him going. He was kind of down. The things weren't going very good. Little jump hook there. He backed down in and took his man right under the bucket. Six tie in this ball game with 10-18 to go. Second half, Northeast Conference Championship. Played a fine floor game tonight. Super. Wasco blocked off. Penix to the rebound. Penix another rebound. You know, every time somebody blocks a shot, you can multiply it by three on the misses that he causes. Intimidation. So the big hits from Wagner are getting some blocks, but they're also causing Ryder to miss those little easy inside shots. It's about three to one. Guy gets three blocks. You got to figure that, you know, there was another eight or nine times that he caused somebody to miss. 
Hobson will re-enter the game in a moment for Wagner. I think about a minute and a half off. Shot clock still at 15 for Ryder. That's not, you know, that these teams don't want to shoot. That's just good defense. Wilcox with a fake. Oh, nice job. Nice job. Showed the ball on that fake. Stayed right under control. Good balance. Big play. Five points for Wilcox. A two-point Ryder lead. 9-15 and counting. Wide open is Lewis. Well, Hell ball, it'll be Wagner possession. This game on either team, you got to know where everybody is before you stick it on the floor. Championship week continues on Thursday with an ACC first round playoff game, NC State in Maryland at 7.30 Eastern time. Then the Atlantic 10 championship from Amherst, Massachusetts to Minutemen of UMass and John Calipari hosting John Cheney and the rugged Temple Owls. And what a game that should be Thursday at 9.30. Don't you know there's a lot of really good hoop fans around this country that aren't real sure what state either one of these schools are in <laughs> that are having a great time watching this ball game. It's a terrific game. Well, Digger Phelps was an alumnus here, is an alumnus here at Ryder. Claire B was the first basketball coach they had here at Ryder. Prominent Wagner alums include Rich Kotite, head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles, who's in attendance tonight from Staten Island. And P.J. Carlissimo, of course, nationally known at Seton Hall, used to be the head coach. There's Coach Rich Kotite of the Eagles. I said, uh, you going to sign Reggie White, Coach? He says, oh, don't ask me that. Don't ask me that. You think he's been asked that before? I think it was up to him. He'd do it in a heartbeat, but it's not always up to the coach, is it? Lewis gets his own rebound. Yezzy. Good rebounding. Lewis did a really good job, but remember, he's the point guard. That's dangerous coming behind your own shot like that. John Yezzy with eight points on the night. Ryder gets that rebound, they'll run it all the way down for the layup. That time it was Yezzy does make the hoop, and we're tied at 51. Super off balance. Ryder fortunate to retain possession. Yeah, he got bent out of shape on that. It's a good dribble penetration, but he started stumbling. There's young Tim Capstraw and a look at Alumni Gymnasium. Small in stature, but large in spirit tonight, 2,000 plus. Most of whom rooting their hearts out for the Ryder Bronx. We've all great loyalty to schools this mm -hmm. size. Oh, I, during my younger days, I made several trips to this very gymnasium and they've always supported their Bronx. Silver. Okay, the key that time, he went on the baseline drive, but he didn't go in there and take the big guys on. Stopped the shot, the jump shot. Good, smart ball player. He goes in there, he gets it blocked, but he took one dribble, pulled it up before they could get to it. Two-point Ryder lead, eight minutes and counting. Northeast Conference Championship. Pass deflected out of bounds by Silver. You see Wagner trying to dribble, penetrate, kick out for the three, but Ryder's not buying it. They're staying on those perimeter players. There's a timeout on the floor. Kevin Bannon exhorting his Ryder Bronx. The home team leads by two. We'll be back in a moment. Have you seen all the press Ford's been getting? Ford. A few miles away from Princeton. Okay, we're a little bit under eight minutes right now at 7.53. On each bench, there's an assistant coach. Keep a track of this. There's another TV timeout coming in four minutes. Wagner has three left and Ryder has two left. And the coaches know that, they're aware of that. That'll come into play in two or three minutes from now, and we can talk about it. But remember that, a TV timeout with four minutes to go, Wagner with three left, and Ryder with two. And, and this thing is going right down, oh, and they'll probably need them all. That's right. And uh, the two games this year in the regular season went down to the last 30 seconds, and they were both decided by a total of four points. Wagner inbounds with the ball down two. This is Quincy Lewis. Youngster from Alpine, Utah. A lot of folks, his family watching out the Beehive State tonight. Butovic has a step. A oh, great possession after the timeout. Both of these teams are so well coached and follow directions. You know, they got over there, Wagner did. Called a play, dialed the number, got a great shot. And a little bit of a foolish foul right there. As Lamont Street is called for the common foul, one stat that strikes me. We're almost 12 minutes and 30 seconds into this half, and Ryder has not committed a team foul in this half. Ed. That could be a factor. Oh, it could be a major factor. And there's Lamont Street with his fourth, and that's also a major factor. He's going out at 731. 
And in a game of this magnitude, the one team to go almost 12 minutes of the half, in fact, beyond 12 minutes of the half, without committing a team foul. All right. Street goes out with seven and a half to go. Capstraw has two things in his mind. One, a number of points, and two, time on the clock. If he gets, say, five or six down, he's going to put him back in. He'd like to let the clock run down to about five minutes. Whichever comes first, Street goes back in. Lob pass is intercepted. Bad idea by Wilcox. Pass was soft, and here you got the run out. And Hobson, a little French pastry in the layup. Layup wasn't so good. It was the catch that was good. Great right over-the-shoulder catch. Right in front of Rich Coltide. You might recruit him as a wide receiver. That's the hardest ball to catch when it comes directly over your head like that. Hobson's got 25, and Wagner retakes the lead. Derek Silver ties it back up. What a show these two are putting on. Yeah, you could tee it up in the ACC or the Big Ten or anywhere you want to with Hobson and Silver playing guard. I guarantee you, you could do that. 27 for Silver, 25 for Hobson. Rickage with a big hope for the Seahawks. That's Milan Rickage's first hoop of the night. Picked a great time, didn't they? the silver hops it on him that's the matchup it dominates this basketball game shot clock still down to 15 Penix underneath he's double team gets it off and a foul nice job by Penix to avoid the double team to avoid walking with the ball you get double team like that a lot of times you'll stumble and walk with it he found enough room down along the baseline to throw that ball usually usually if you don't get rid of it before players that size double you you got bad problems. They're fortunate to get out of that. That's Hobson's third foul, and I like what Capstraw is doing here. Taking no chances with 5.44 to go. He's still going to give his man a minute rest or so. I don't think the third foul had much to do with it. What he's doing is pulling him now before the TV timeout that's coming up in four minutes. If he can rest him for this minute 44, and then through the TV timeout, he's going to be ready to finish. He may, he may not make it to the TV timeout. <laughs> he's also going to gun him back in there if he's about four down. You always take your best ball player out just before the TV timeout. One of the credos of life is a basketball player. One of the credos of playing on television. And that's another thing, how these guys have reacted to these coaches that they never play. That's right. They were playing on TV. That's another mark of the job that they're doing. Ryder you get used to it, you know, when you're on all the time. Ryder is on two or three times locally, but as far as national TV appearances, forget it. Unless it's the finals of a conference championship tournament, which it is here tonight. Well, in the, in the bigger leagues, everybody's got an assistant coach that really watches those TV timeouts and makes sure that you make use of them. And these staffs have really done a good job of that. No basket, the foul before the shot on Jabbar Jones, pushing from behind. That's a pretty good foul, he's pushing to lay it up. That's the first foul of the second half on the Ryder Bronx, so no shooting foul, obviously. And Hopson will come back in. Didn't make it. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you're going to see Ryder, because they only have one team foul, at least for the next few minutes, they can afford to be very aggressive defensively. They can, and if it stays this way down in the next, to the last three minutes, it's really going to be a factor, particularly if they're a little bit behind. Now, if they're ahead, it won't matter. Butovic. And Jones controls the rebound. Butovic had great position, Ed. Yeah, I just brought it up short. Under five minutes to play. Nice ball movement. Oh, great defensive right about play. The basket. Great defensive play. And look who made it. Hobson. Kevin Bannon can't believe it. Derek Silver doubts it. You take a look at it. Hey, I want to tell you something. I don't care. Big East, Big Ten, anybody around your ACC. Somebody missed a boat on this kid. He is a serious player. That's a terrific job of drawing the charge. Hobson. You know what? A few people missed the boat on him, too. Oh. 27 for Hobson. Wagner by two. Good judgment. 
Jackson came out to deny the three, so Silver hits the two. They're pumped. We're down to the four-minute mark right now. In the Hobson Super Super, <laughs> super matchup, Super now takes the lead, 29-27. Shot by Hezzy. No, I got himself out of control. You know, you gotta, you gotta be ready to slam on the brakes when you're guarded. He came over that on ball pick, and the Ryder kids were right in his face, and he just had to jack up a bad shot. 11th tie of the ball game, and we're approaching three and a half minutes in regulation. The winner goes to the big dance. The loser has still had a great season with 18 wins coming in. They won't think it. It was great. Here's the on ball pick again. Good jump out and help. Another on ball pitch, and here comes trouble. Silver and down the lane draws the foul. That, that second on ball pitch sprung it. I was surprised, frankly, as we look at Yezzy on the, the hardwood, that Silver was so open there, didn't have the presence of mind to pull up and take the jumper. I think he probably wanted to. It looked like he was a little bit out of control and stumbling. Three minutes, 15 seconds left in regulation. The game has been tied 11 times. The most recent at 59. Buy a house, luxury car for no money down. What are you waiting for? But I tell you, I come to this country on a boat. I have no money. I buy a property for no money down. Make $200,000. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> <It's pretty good. laughs> oh, <there's laughs> <laughs> the winner goes to the NCAA. Wagner's got five team fouls. Ryder only has two, so nobody's in big trouble there. You got Wagner with three timeouts, Ryder with two, no more TVs, and we're talking about three minutes and a tie ball game. Just what we thought we'd have. Two teams so evenly matched, dominating the Northeast Conference throughout the season. It's right that they should meet for a chance to advance. Deion Hames running the show. 15 on the shot clock. Wilcox. And Hobson with a big rebound. He goes down. He's hurt. Hobson is hurt. Don't want to speculate. All I can tell you is that he's in some pain. Obvious. I was in the nose of the eye, probably, you know, when you get poked a finger in your eye, then, that, that's what happened. There are very, very few things hurt that bad. Tim Capstraw hoping that his ace shooter's eyesight is not affected if it was that. Let's take a look at it. Grabs a rebound. Might have been his own man. There it was right there, yeah. And Lamont yeah. Street appeared to come by and nail him. That's Hobson's first rebound of the game. He won't forget it. open for a moment. Thompson's being face guarded all over the floor. Ryder doesn't want any party. I'm touching that basketball. Lewis, the baseline drive. They call him for the player control foul. Good call. He was out of control. You got nowhere to go on that baseline when you're his size. That's his fourth foul, but bigger than that, they lose possession on it. Look at it right here. You're pinned against the line. That's a good job. That's just good defense. You got to be able to slam on the brakes. But more than that, you got to be careful about driving that baseline. Two minutes, eight seconds and counting. Ryder hosting Wagner for a chance to the to go to the big dance, and we're tied at 59. You can be sure that Mr. Suber will be covered like a blanket. Under two minutes. Well, Wagner, could, Wagner couldn't get it to Hobson on the other end, but here's Suber gets the shot. He is. What a half he's had. A prime time player and prime time tonight. Derek Silver did not shoot for a high percentage at all in the first half, but he has lightened it up in the second half. Six of nine in the second half. Hobson. Ryder with a lead in the ball. And Haynes, like, making like Marcus Haynes to control it. I tell you, that gives your coach a nightmare when you go around doing that. Okay, you got 116, a two point lead. 
What Wagner's got to do now is just play good defense. Don't pick up a foolish foul. Ryder's going to run some clock. 25 seconds left on the shot clock. The Ryder Bronx, for the moment, in control of their destiny. Smart defense by Wagner. You don't need to get out there and foul. You look in terms of total possessions now, Ed. Sure you do. Down under 10 seconds, they got to get something going. Silver for three. McCullough with the rebound. That could be it. Now you got a foul. Good foul. Good foul. That's all right. Lamont Street. Lamont Street, a very heady play, committing the foul sooner rather than later. Well, you got to foul in a spot like that because it was down under 45. You need to do it quickly. A moment while we have a stoppage to salute not only the players. That's Lamont Street's fifth right there. Nine points for Mr. Street. Salute not only the players but the referees tonight who have done a great game because we, we haven't noticed them. And that's when they're at their best. Tom Lopes, Stan Rode, and George Watts have done a fantastic job under tough circumstances in a very loud gym. Sports Center is next. Highlights of the Sonics and the Bulls tonight. From Chicago, Larry Holmes is fighting again, if you can believe that. We'll have the highlights. And an emotional night at the Igloo in Pittsburgh as Mario Lemieux returns to the Igloo for the first time since coming back from Hodgkin's disease treatment. And we can promise you that the end of this game will be included as well in our Sports Center highlights. A timeout, Tim Wagner calls time to marshal the troops for one last charge. Ryder up by two. They've got to push the ball quick, get a shot. When they hit it, call timeout. If they miss the shot, they got to foul immediately. They're telling the officials right now, we're going to call timeout after we score. Okay? In Ryder's case, if they get the free throws down, they can't be past it on defense. they got to play aggressive defense. Fortunately for them now, they have no foul trouble. So they can go right after it in the backcourt and put a lot of pressure on Wagner. And all Wagner can do is throw the ball inbound. Mark Wilcox then with two of the biggest free throws of his life. Well, the next one will push it to a two-possession game, and that's important. But the fact of the matter is that Ryder can put on great pressure. And every time the Wagner kids get the advantage, they can foul him, and they got to throw it inbound because they only got two teams fouled. We're really holding the cards now. It's a two-possession game. Wagner's got to hurry up. 35 seconds left. Hobson is fouled. Good foul. Good foul if it wasn't shooting. Let's see what the call is. They're going to give him two. Wilcox, as Hobson was going up for the shot, fouls him, and Kevin Bannon doesn't uh, think it's so good. Oh, uh, Kevin's furious. I don't know. It's a close call. Kevin's got a streak he's got to uh, keep intact. There two, he is. Two months ago, Tommy Bannon born. Before the baby, there's the record. Look after the baby's birth. They call him the Irish Rebel, Tommy Bannon. He turned this baby around. <laughs> Literally. The kid's, the kid's two months old. He's 17 and 5. The Prince of Puns, Ed Murphy. He turned this baby around. I like that. Wagner calls another timeout. Tim Capstraw wanting no mistakes. He's got to cover. What situation said does he have to cover here? Well, he's only got one timeout left, so he's got to get a lot done right here. He's shooting two. If he, gets, he wants to remind his team that if he gets both of these down, not to commit any foolish fouls, just to play sound defense. If they if they cut the lead to one, they're probably just going to put the pressure on and maybe not foul they get to half court. Let's listen into the Ryder Bronx huh? Well, it's pretty loud here at Alumni Gym and drowning out Kevin Bannon. Can you imagine in a gym with all this noise and so much at stake? These two young fellows aren't going to have much of a voice left at the end of the night. Well, Ryder's reminding his team that they only got three key fouls. So look, when they gain the advantage, when they start to drive around you, follow them, they can throw the ball in bounds. What fouls aren't you going to do any good tomorrow? you got three fouls to give here in short if you're the Bronx. Absolutely, and that's what they've done. They fouled a little late that time. As soon as, as, soon as the drive started, they should have chopped and given the foul up. And made the Wagner players start all over. Yeah. 34 seconds left to play. Hobson is on the line for two. If Wagner gets the lead cut to two, he may go for the steal until the ball gets to half court before he gives up the foul. He's got a few seconds if the lead is cut to two to play defense and try to get the steal. 
Jackson's had a great night with 27 points. He makes both these free throws. It'll be his greatest. His career high is 28, but that's far from his mind now. 74 percent free throw shooter, but in this case, I can't think of anybody that shoots 90 percent. I'd have rather shoot it. Dead center. Never gave it a chance to miss. Well, that keeps him in the hunt. A three-point deficit. I think this foul is key. I think if you see this shot go down and it leads cut to two, I don't think Wagner will foul quick. Let's see what happens. Let's take a look at it. I doubt if they will. They might go for the steal for eight or nine seconds. Oh, he's decided to foul quick. I'm not so sure he was supposed to. Well, no. John Yezzy committed the foul and Tim Capstraw. No, that wasn't a call. Tim no. Capstraw didn't want that quick foul if it's a two-point game. That's Yezzy's third, but more important, it'll put Ryder on the foul line for a one-and-one. And one. Three a one-and-one, and, one, and then Wagner only has one timeout left, so he can't use that to ice the shoot or anything. For 32 seconds to go, he's got to hang out to it. But the advantage would seem to me, even if, if Wilcox makes two again, it still only ran three seconds off the clock, so there's still time for Wagner to do something. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, just, it's not a matter of time. I just thought you might take a couple of seconds to try to get the steal. And a rebound by Mutavic. Here we go. Ryder by two. Wagner with the ball. 25 seconds left. You got a world of time. Use your timeout. Use your time Capstraw out. Capstraw signaling for it. He wants the timeout. Hobson doesn't see him. You got to use it. Hobson doesn't see it. And he draws oh, the foul. Oh, oh. Wow. Hey, I'll tell you, was he outside the three-point line? No. Referee He's inside. Said, okay. Hobson can't believe it, but... That's a terrible shot to get a foul on. It really was. Kevin Bannon can't believe there was a foul call. Well, it probably was. It looked like he caved in from the side. What Kevin's going nuts on probably is just a judgment. But, Ed, you're Tim Capstro over there. You were signaling timeout for 20 seconds, and your point guard, all he had to do was look to his left. He didn't see it. Hey. Has <laughs> <laughs> that ever happened to you? Oh, yeah. It's easy to gamble with somebody else's money. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's all the stress. The crowd's going nuts. He got himself on the free throw line. It worked out, but... Hamster wanted a timeout. There ain't any doubt about that. He was going crazy over there. 11 seconds left. Hobson with a chance to tie the game for Wagner. Got to make them both. He hasn't hit the rim in these last three foul shots. Well, you see a shooter getting a groove. It's a beautiful thing. This kid has no idea that he's going to miss. He may go in, he may not. But I'm telling you, Mitchell never crosses his mind. Off the back iron. Rebound to Wagner. Lewis has it. Hobson drives. He's got him at five seconds left. Timeout. Four seconds left to play. What a player. Bobby Hobson has given Tim Capstraw and the Wagner Seahawks a one-point lead. What will happen in the last four seconds? Do not adjust your sets. We'll be back to Lawrenceville in a moment. And earlier tonight, Wright State, its first ever NCAA bid. The Ryder Bronx buying for their first ever NCAA bid. The first time Wagner's ever been on national TV. Yeah, you're a Hope fan and you don't love this. You are legally dead. We could just roll you out. <laughs> All right, now Ryder's got a big task here, and they've got to negotiate the entire court with four seconds left and somehow get a good shot. You can't worry about who catches it. Whoever catches it has got to shoot it. Four points, four seconds. There is a remote chance for a rebound. Wagner's smart play. They saw where they're going to line up and then they use their timeout. You've got to play for this situation. I figure the pass somewhere short of half court, feed dribble and put it up. And... All right, McCullough will do the honors for Ryder College. Wagner Seahawks, one point away from going to the big dance. Four Wagner's seconds. got to challenge this pass now. They cannot play past it. There it is, just short of half court. Super will take the shot. Holy mackerel. Oh, my goodness.
shot by a terrific ball player. Darren Silver, 33 points. He hit five of his last six. The man that several coaches say could play on a much higher level performed at that level tonight. Oh, he can. There's no question. He and Hobbs are great players. The two coaches, good friends. I've been on both sides of this.